Now this ticker tell you will need one, a Wii console, which is maybe 50 bucks on eBay, 100 bucks new. Worst case scenario, if you just go to Walmart and get one off the shelf, 140, 150 bucks. Wii is the cheapest console out there. It's not the most sophisticated, but definitely the cheapest. Two, you'll need an SD card. Maybe five bucks at Best Buy. You could find a better deal at Tiger Direct. Don't waste your money on getting SDHC or really big SD cards. If you're going to set up the USB loader and use a hard drive, you're going to put all your stuff on the hard drive. So you really just need the SD card for a few apps. Uh, three, an external hard drive. That's like 50 bucks at Best Buy for a pretty large hard drive. You can get external hard drives, all kinds of deals on that, or maybe Tiger Direct or PriceWatch, who knows. And finally, four, Internet access and lots and lots of Google. What this will do. The Wii is the cheapest console you can buy, but does not have a hard drive, play MP3s, or DivX, AVA, FLV movies by default, like some of the nicer consoles, such as the PlayStation or the Xbox. This activity will let you transform your Wii so that it plays, saves, and backs up games on a hard drive, plays MP3s, WMAs, music, etc., plays movies and DivX, AVI, MP4, MPEG, FLV, MKV, etc., runs custom applications and emulates other consoles such as GameCube, Game Boy, etc., browses, downloads, and installs applications from the internet, plays YouTube, internet radio. There's a lot of other things you can do too once you get Homebrew installed, but this is just to give you an idea. So basically you're going to take the cheapest console you can buy and give it all of the, well, a lot of the capabilities of say a PlayStation or an Xbox. Probably the most important ability, you'll be able to back up all of your games from DVD onto the hard drive, put your DVDs in a safe place and play them off the hard drive. Basically your Wii becomes your full blown media center where you play games, you can watch movies, listen to music, surf the internet, whatever you want to do, and never have to put DVDs in it. Note, this may require lots of tinkering. You should be someone who enjoys tinkering and solving unusual problems. If that frustrates you, don't hack your Wii. Understand that nothing is risk free. You could break your Wii if you do something wrong. Take responsibility for what you do and don't blame the folks at Homebrew who unselfishly donate so much of their time. If you're unwilling to take the risk, just don't do it. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. Section A. First, you need to install the Homebrew channel. First, you need to pony up and get yourself an SD card. Before you can perform any real modifications to the Wii, you must install the Homebrew channel via one of the hack methods from Weebrew.org, HackMe.com, or BootMe.org. Before you do this, disable Wii Connect 24 to prevent the Wii from auto-updating. If the Wii does update, you will likely lose all your modifications as the Wii was never designed to run the Homebrew channel. Nintendo seeks to disable HPC with every update, and updating may even brick your Wii if HPC is installed. So let's get started. Let's go to bannerbomb.qoid.us and download Bannerbomb for your version of the Wii menu firmware, be it that you have 4.1 or 4.2. Um, the file should be called something like abd6a underscore v200 or something along those lines. If you are curious, Bannerbomb is an exploit that uses a malformed banner to crash the Wii. It then runs code to execute the boot.doll file placed in the root of the SD card. This bypasses the Wii's security measures and allows you to install the Hacker Forged Homebrew channel in the Wii's memory, as though it were a valid Nintendo channel. Interesting historical note, the Homebrew Club was perhaps the first computer club, a fellowship of hackers and technology enthusiasts attracting the attendance of giants like Steve Wozniak in the early 80s. Warning, associating that HPC, that is the Homebrew Club, with the HPC, that is the Homebrew Channel, that you will soon install on your Nintendo Wii, can produce pleasurable bouts of nostalgia as you tinker to your heart's content. Next, extract the contents of the Bannerbomb archive and copy the entire private directory to the SD card. Next, get the HackMe installer from bootme.org download. If using the older version, copy the installer.elf to the root of the SD card and rename it to boot.elf. If using the older HackMe, boot the Wii, click the SD icon, and insert the SD card. If using the latest HackMe, that's like version 8 or greater, just copy the extracted contents to the SD card, insert it in the Wii, and boot the Wii. When the menu dialog pops up that says load boot.elf or doll, choose yes. Press the 1 button on the Wiimote when asked to, then reboot the Wii. That's it. After rebooting, click on Homebrew and go download and install some software. My faves are mPlayer, DivX, Quake, Emulators, etc. Section B. Next, you need to utilize the Trucha Bug exploit. You will want to install the Trucha Patched IS and CIS. You will need to install Juan and Coco's IS249. Download IS249 from gwht.wiki.com forward slash IS249. 
Extract it and then copy the apps folder to the SD card. Copy the boot.doll file to the root of the card. Insert the SD card into your Wii and power it up. It will launch the boot.doll file and give you a hack to install the custom IS files. Start with IS236, work your way from the lowest to the highest. Section C, install a USB loader. Note you have several options here. You can install the loader and access it through Homebrew, or you can install one in Coco's new USB channel in the Wii menu. I'm picking the first option. Download a USB loader from gwht.wiki.com or one in Cocos and install it. To do so, copy the extracted contents of the download to your SD card and run it from Homebrew, aka a WAD manager. Or get to usbloadergx.correo.net and download USB Loader GX 2.0. Click on the application or WAD manager to install the GX USB loader. Section D. Configure an external drive with the WBFS file system to hold images of Nintendo Wii games. Buy yourself a spiffy new external USB 2.0 hard drive. Ching! Download a WBFS file manager to format the drive as WBFS. Here are some links where you can find WBFS file managers. Of course the links might change, so you might have to use Google. Use the WBFS file manager to copy some image files to the WBFS partition. Once you've formatted the drive with WBFS, copy any games you want to that partition. If it's a large drive, split it into multiple partitions, and you can do FAT32 or NTFS and put movies and MP3s on the other one. All of these can then be used with the Wii to play movies, MP3s, and games off of the hard drive. Once you've completed preparing the drive, connect the WBFS drive to the second or bottom USB port on the Wii. Enjoy not having to change disks anymore on your Wii. Test it out! Note that versions, font names, and locations will change frequently, so now that you know what you need to look for, you may have to use your good friend Google to find what you need. With thanks for one and Coco Tantric and many other hardworking groups of folks that made this possible for us. For this hack, you're going to need a secure digital card. Um, you'll need to go to the WeBrew, Hack Me, and Boot Me websites and download those programs. To start off with, you need to install the Homebrew channel, so you need to download Hack Me and put the boot doll file on your SD card and once you do you'll go to your Wii and insert it and then so basically take your SD card and insert it in the Wii slot like so and then power on your Wii and then Now, I've already got the Homebrew channel <coughs> and the USB loader set up, so I can't go through these steps with you. But there's plenty of you know, good tutorials posted on YouTube, and there's plenty of information on the websites. So read up on it before you start. Basically, once you put your card in, you want to click on this icon. And with that file, it'll load from the SD card, and it'll try to install the Homebrew channel. Alright, so now the Humber channel is installed, and this will give you a means to access, um, you know, a lot of the Humber applications and things, and it'll take your basic Wii and turn it into a fully functional um, media player and, you know, game station with a hard drive and everything. Um, so, you know, I've linked to Best Buy and I bought a 500 gigabyte laptop drive, and I set up three partitions, an NTFS, a FAT32, um, that I used to put, you know, movies and MP3s on and things, and then a WBFS partition, which is Nintendo's proprietary format. And just Google WBFS will find lots of tools to help you format partitions and hard drives with that file system, but you'll need that um, in order to load your games off of a hard drive. And so the first thing I did, I installed USB loader. Here's another loader, and this one I've actually installed some game images and things. There's 249. You can look at, look at all the different games I've got installed here. So, um... This is a great way to back up the discs you have, you know, um, you know, I don't know about you, but we, you know, me, me and my kids like to use them as frisbees. Um, so this way I can take a, a disc and 
I can pop it in and if I do I click over here and I can simply it'll image the entire game to the hard drive and then I never have to use a disc again I can put the disc in a safe place and just play the game off the hard drive it runs faster it's more convenient because it's like a jukebox um, and you don't have to you know change disc or anything you could put hundreds of games on the hard drive and play them all right there without changing discs and it you know protects your you know the original disc that you have you don't have to worry about I'm getting scratched or broken I doubt Nintendo would replace them if you gave them a sad story this is just you know, Zelda and it's running off the hard drive on the WBFS partition alright I'm going to reset everything here and reboot and I want to go back and you know the more expensive consoles out there like the PlayStation 3 and 2 and the Xbox um, they have hard drives and they play Blu-ray and DVDs and MP3s and music and all that and they have you know visualization of, the Wii by default doesn't come with all those fancy things. It doesn't have a hard drive, doesn't play MP3s, doesn't, you know, play movies or anything. Um, but when you install Homebrew, you can change all that. And once you add, like, the USB loader, you can install lots of other applications. So if you see, like, here's, you know, these are all applications. That's, a, you know, for l looking at resi the resistance on different circuits and uh, an alarm and just, you know, different file browsers and text editors and an FTP server even. Um, and you know games and things, just old school games, a, a metronome for practicing the keyboard or the guitar. And there's all kinds of apps you can install, but one of the really neat ones that I liked, um, you know, from browsing the home. And by the way, you can install all of these, you know, through the internet now. You don't have to, you know, put them on your card and sideload them. You can just install them right from the internet with the new versions of Homebrew out there. But um, this M Player right here, if you guys are, you know, Linux users, then you're probably familiar with M Player. It's just, real, it's awesome. It plays everything, just about every kind of media format you can think of, MP3, sound, video, whatever. Um, but what I'm going to do is go here, and let me go to here, and with FAT32 partition on that same drive, so I, you know, I have a WBFS partition with all my games, FAT32 with movies and music and NTFS with some data. And notice that you know I've got all of these, you know, these folders here, so if I want to, I'm going to go play an MP3. And I'll go here and... Okay. So I'm just playing an MP3 and, you know, there's full visualization if I wanted to. Um, I'm going to go to mo movies here. So I'm going to movies. I'm just going to play an OGM file, ABI, MP4, MPEG, you know, you name it. It plays the FLV. <laughs> um, you know, if you've ripped it from YouTube, whatever. I'm just going to fast forward a little bit. All right, so, you know, now, now it's, you know, and the neat thing is, you know, think about it, a Wii is one of the cheapest consoles out there. Sometimes you can pick them up for a hundred bucks, you know, or brand new, or $149 brand new. Um, get them unused, you know, used on eBay for 40, 50 bucks. It's, it's just one of the cheapest game consoles you can buy. So with a little bit of modification, um, you can turn it into a full-fledged multimedia center and console. I mean, I used to use my computer over there a lot to play video and internet and things and surf on my computer, and, and now I really just use my Wii most of the time. I don't have to boot it, and um, you know, it's just convenient. But now, here we go. Here's the homebrew browser, and I'm just going to load this up and just look at some of the things that you can install. Um, again, if you're familiar with, you know, Debian and apt get, it's almost like a you know a repository or a sources list. Or if you use you know Red Hat Package Manager and RPMs. Um, or if you download applications on your iPhone from the iStore, if you're Android and you get it from the Android market. Um, so this, it's neat. We have this sort of, you know, homebrew server out there. And 
we can load things right off the internet, browse applications, upgrade things, install things. And I'm going to do an update real quick. Just updated my homebrew channel. All right, and I'm gonna go ahead and launch the browser again. I'm going online and look for what's new in the homebrew world. Um, you know, granted, the Wii doesn't compare to the PlayStation 3 um, or the latest generation Xbox in terms of graphic sophistication or even hardware sophistication for that matter. Um, but as far as having a, you know, a, a completely hackable, configurable, um, malleable, moldable console and entertainment center, it's, it's unbeatable. Um, these are just some of the new updates and things and apps. I'm just going to close that, but um, I'm going to go, go over here to pop over here to emulators real quick. And there's how much I have free on my USB card that I can browse down here if I want. And let me so look at all these other consoles. You know, you can load emulators for them, and then load ROMs and play lots of old school games. You know, Game Boy, Nintendo, 64, GameCube, just all kinds of th uh, stuff. You know, Atari. There's even some you know, Commodore 64. That was one of my favorites. Um, but just you know, nice. And then I go over here. I look at media and you know, different media players and things I can just install on Homebrew right off the internet. So my Wii away from Wii. Um, utilities to you know, manage my file system or whatever, explore things, I can set those up and install those. <laughs> I don't know why you'd want to, but hey, there's Wii VNC now. Now you can control your computer inconveniently from your Wii, but hey, because you can, right? It's a cool port. <laughs>